post this again on Instagram, right? Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jake Thompson. I go by Jake Thompson Hair. Thanks for tuning in today. We're taking over Hairbrain's Instagram for a little bit of live. We're gonna be going into some avant-garde looks. And yeah, so hey guys, thanks for tuning in. All right. So let's get into this. Let's talk about what we're going to do today. So first off, one of the things is that this avant-garde look was something I did back in 2011. It was something that I won with uh, for Naha. And that stands for North American Hairstylist of the Year. And so this is not the exact color that I did, but this is just something that I wanted to debut and kind of show you a different version of what I've done in the past. This actually almost kind of looks like a little bit like a Russian hat, as you can kind of see through there. So yeah, with that, we've got, uh, this was created with a clipper. And as you can see, you know, as I start to cut, you can start to see the unveiling of some of this color that kind of comes through. So you've got your black, your yellows, your blues. And then the way that I've actually place this, you can see how this color extends all the way down, which is kind of fun. It's very different, very fun. Cool. Um, but today, let's go ahead and kind of put this to the side here. I get asked a lot of questions about avant-garde hair and how avant-garde hair is created. You know what? That's the thing about when you're doing avant-garde hair, you, you want to kind of let your mind go a little bit from doing the norm, because when you start to look at hair that kind of grows out of the head, you know, like regular commercial hair, when you're doing weaves, colors, you know, any sort of single process, just any sort of cutting in general, you know, avant-garde hair is approached a little bit different. You can use people's natural hair, you can use synthetic fiber, you can use wool, you can use synthetic hair, the, the kenicolin hair, whatever that's called. You know, I can never pronounce that. Um, that's what we used on this particular look is the synthetic hair that most of the times people braid with. But, you know, that, you know, with some of these other looks that I'm going to show you how those were created, I did a few different things that are out of the norm, kind of. But, you know, without further ado, let's talk a little bit about that. Well, first off, let me tell you kind of what we're going to debut today is a uh, Marie Antoinette inspired look. And this Marie Antoinette inspired look, of course, it's going to be all white and we're using synthetic hair as well. There's a combination of burning the hair, but then there's also a combination of spray painting the hair as well to create this really unique texture. And um, yeah, so let's get right into that. Cool. All right, guys. Um, so one of the things is that um, when it comes to, let's see here. First off, so look at this. Look at this old school iron. 
All right, guys. This old school, <laughs> I picked this up at the DI. Like, look at this thing, you know, it's like from the Stone Age, you know what I mean? But the cool thing about these irons is that the reason why I wanted an iron like this is that the newest irons that you buy at Bed Bath & Beyond or wherever you go, Target, those irons turn off after they get, they're on for so long. And so these irons, if you can get one at the DI, they never turn off. And so they get so stinking hot. It's amazing. But the crazy thing about it is that this, so I'm going to show you here. So first off, if you were to take this iron, just like here, and this regular synthetic hair, okay? So synthetic hair, when it comes, it actually comes in bags of hair. Let me just uh, get into my studio here. Oh, really, really quick. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys something. So this right here, this synthetic hair right here, but I took regular bags of hair, okay? Let's say for example, I took just this section right here. I cut it off right through there, and that would be where this, this little piece right here. So you can see how that's the natural hair, but then what I did is I took, I took those corners with this on, and I burned this, I put it right up against there, and I burned it, so I created this crustacean right through there. And then I turned it around and I did the same thing right through here, okay? Now with this white hair, it turns yellow. Now I through there, okay? And so what I wanna do is I wanna create this texture to break this up just like so, just like that. And then what I do is I start to kind of rip this apart, okay? Now if I rip this apart, you start to create this texture that has got hard crustacean with this like really interesting fabric, you know? And so as you can like look at this, you can create this really cool, you know, it, it, does, it just does not look completely normal, which is kind of interesting because you get this really shiny fabric and then you get this hard crustacean on these ends. So we're gonna use this to create this Marie Antoinette type style. And you can see how I did this and I started to break these up yesterday. So I'm gonna build this style on this mannequin head. It's gonna be super, super fun. One of the cool things is that me being in the hair industry, you know, shooting uh, my own work as far as Naha, shooting my own things as far as for editorial, shooting my own um, just for my own uh, creativity because one of the things is that I work in the salon, I'm in the salon four days a week. And being in the salon four days a week, you know, I do, we all do kind of consumer friendly hair. You know, when I do photo shoots, I like to expand my repertoire and I like to do things that are completely different. I, it's, it's, it's my art basically. So any of you guys that do some of that, uh, shoot your own work, you know, props to you, man. I think it's a really fun way to stay passionate in this hair industry and to stay, to not get burned out. So I would encourage you guys to at least start getting with a photographer, shoot your own work, you know, whatever it may be. So I want to inspire you today to look at and to do things differently. So I want to thank Gerard, Gordon, Randy from Hairbrain for having me. Uh, to be a part. So hopefully you guys find some really cool inspiration today with this. So ask questions. Let's get into it. Cool. All right, guys. So first off, one of the things is that if I was working on a regular person and they didn't have this like shaved hair right here, of course, what I would be doing first off, I would probably wrap up their hair in a wig wrap. So that would be number one. Then I would put some, then I would put um, a stocking over the top of this and I would start to pin this with a U shape uh, pin, something like this. The YS Park uh, U shape pins, these are, um, have got a little grip on those as well. And so I'm gonna, I would use something like this to pin it inside of that stocking. But since the hair is shaved, we're gonna use that to kind of stick the hair onto, okay? So first off, I'm gonna be using you guys as uh, my mirror to kind of create 
this look. So first off, you can see how, as I start kind of put this on there, I'm starting to just kind of stick that anywhere. And you can see how, and again, when, you, when you're doing something like this, you're building the shape, you're building it, you're building it, you're building it. And, you know, you have to kind of stand, you know, don't stand so close to it. You want to kind of stand afar. I've got a mirror over here so I can use this mirror to kind of use as a balancing tool for me. Because one of the things is that with you are going to do, you know, this one, this one was a little bit, this one was a little bit shorter. So there was only so much hair in between this section. This was about an inch. So you can vary the length of the hair that you burn between. You know, and you can see how like the texture, you, you can almost kind of defy gravity with it. That's really kind of what I love about stuff like this is that it does not have to have like this, um, you know, you could build a French twist shape to it. You could build something, you know, because I took a class from um, Sharon, um, Sharon Blaine and she was so, you know, she had this, you know, it's all about composition, right? Like you can put the, the, the uh, movement here, you could put it down through the back, like you can do, uh, you, you can do such beautiful things. You could bring it down in front. So we're going to just build, 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 and build. So. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and uh, we've got Morgan on uh, the video. So if you have any questions for me, Morgan can uh, tell me and we can answer those. So the cool thing too is what I really, really love is that that texture that you get in there. And you wanna start to look at things that because again, like we, you know, we, we, we do such beautiful things in the salon, right? But sometimes our creative work just expands our, just the way we approach different things. So. I've got a question. Yes, sir. How are you getting the hair to stick? Okay. So, so with this texture, right? Because you have, you know, this texture that I built right through here, you got hard crustacean, okay? So it's been burned with an iron. And if you're just tuning in, I'll go over that just again. If you're just tuning in, you've got a hard crustacean next to hair that has not been burned. And so this texture itself is pretty sticky. Not sticky as in like a gel, but sticky as in it kind of sticks to itself. It's like Velcro almost. And so that kind of sticks to, when you apply this, it kind of sticks to itself, which is super awesome. And so you can get this cool texture and it'll pretty much stick to itself. You don't have to use any sort of hairspray when you're creating this. So all the pre-work is done before. And I'll show you some of these pieces. So as you can see, so this is like, this synthetic hair through here, through the middle, and then I took an iron and I burned each side just like that to the hair. You can take from lengths of here all the way out to here and you sprinkle that, okay? You can actually sprinkle it on the ground and you can put like a piece of wax paper or parchment paper, you can put it down and then you can use an iron just like this, you know? If you're using synthetic hair, you're going to iron, and so you're going to kind of melt it together, and so you can make those hair sheets. That's how I usually do it. It can also be done with real hair as well, but you're going to be using um, hairspray in between the layers, and so and then you can kind of iron that together. So it all really depends on the detail work of if you add multiple colors, if you do just one color, but those hair sheets can be... Um, you know, I'm going to be talking about uh, some hair sheets done with real hair 
um, here in just a minute on one of my other pieces. And I'll kind of show you how I created that, which is completely different than what I just said. So yeah, thanks for that question. That's awesome. Got another question. Yes, sir. Are you using 100% synthetic hair or a blend? So this is all done on, this is done with synthetic hair. This is all done with synthetic hair. If it comes to a hair sheet, I would probably pick, you know, one or the other, because if you're going to be using all real hair, um, use all real hair. If you're using like synthetic hair, use all synthetic hair. So cool. Thanks guys. Do you use a steamer? Okay, so using so using a steamer for, um, are you talking about the hair sheets or are you talking about, what are you talking about? What is that in reference to? I'm sorry, if you're using- um, To melt the hair. To melt the hair. So a steamer is not gonna melt the hair. You wanna use an old school iron to melt the hair like this because an old school iron is gonna get hot enough and you can see that there's already like some burned hair to that. So if you're gonna burn the hair, you need to use either a, um, an old school iron like that or you can use a heat gun. And a heat gun, um, I've used a heat gun before, Let's talk a little bit about that. So let me show you something here really quick. This is where I used an actual heat gun on the hair. So I'm gonna move this out of scene here really quick and then I'm gonna show you. So this, this one was done with an actual heat gun itself. And so as you can see how this looks right through here, this is like a hard crustacean through here. Now, and of course you can see how that normal synthetic hair is on the end. So this is the same hair through here that is through here throughout the top area. So um, how this was created was I took, and I took strands of hair as far as synthetic hair. So I laid it out on my table and I would just take like clumps of hair and I would put it on, and I would just kind of drape it over the top, drape everything over the top, like so. Then what I would do is I would take my heat gun and my heat gun, and I would basically, I wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do this on a real person because you're going to burn them. This is why mannequin heads are so amazing. So I took this and I would like use my heat gun on top and I would melt it, I would form it to the head shape, like so. And then I would just go layer and layer and layer and I would keep going. And as you can see, as you get really close, the hair would kind of like bunch right up. And so it creates this texture um, on the head where this crustacean, and we actually shot this. Um, I wanted, I wanted to do something again that was like completely out of the ordinary. So when we shot this, we shot this on complete black. So she was on a black background and I tried to, we did her makeup to where she looked like she wasn't there. Well, she was all very, very dark um, to kind of look like a ghost was wearing the hairstyle. So that's kind of my inspiration behind this. So this was done with a heat gun as well. So you can feel this. It's like this hard crustacean, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So, yeah, cool. Got a question. What's the popping sound when you part the hair? This one? I think it was about the, uh, the other one. Oh, the, the popping of the, the popping of the sound was actually done. Um, that's that hard crustacean that I was talking about that is like, so it's a combination of I burned the end through here and then I spray painted this white because it burned, of course it went to like a yellow color that was kind of ugly. And so that popping sound was me breaking that crustacean. Is that what you guys were talking about? So, 
when I break that through there and then I can pull that apart. And so you can now, and you can build this piece that is like this frothy piece of, like so. And so you've got this, all this different texture kind of writing through there. And so you can build, so when I go in here, I can start to build. And I actually did this look. This was actually done. Uh, my, my two best friends got married and they got married here in Utah. And they had like this champagne, um, the, this kind of like champagne bride that was at the entrance of their wedding. And they, I was honored to do their hair, to do this kind of like this champagne brides, because she was the one that was in like, um, she was the one introducing everybody to the wedding, but I did her hair kind of like a Marie Antoinette style. She was in this whole metal cage of champagne flutes that went down, but I was lucky enough to style like a, a style just like this. So it was super fun. Sheets in advance, how do you store them? So I make, so yeah, these sheets were all done in advance. I made uh, probably 150 of them. And so, yeah, you know, because again, I want to prepare before I do something like this. Because if I run out and I'm right in the middle of a hairstyle, then all I know is that it's going to, I'm going to have to stop, pause, remake more. So yeah, I make a lot more than I need. And the cool thing is that, you know, if I, you know, plan to prepare to fail, fail to prepare, right? Is that how it goes? Is that how it goes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might say something wrong. I'm like, mm, yeah, yeah, oh. But the cool thing about it is you start to kind of look at this shape, right? You're starting to see that I'm kind of building this weight out through here. I want some length. And so I'm even going to want more length through here. I'm really going to start to kind of build this up throughout the top. But the cool thing is that when you when it's going to be backlit, if there's going to be lights behind it, you're going to be able to see through the shape. If it's shot on white, you definitely want to make sure that there is some sort of contouring coming around because it could disappear in the white. That's one thing to really look at. You know, everybody shoots for Instagram, you shoot for your, you know, you wanna think about all those specific things that are going to change the way that, you know, something looks. And so if this was all on white, I mean, I did a collection in 2014 that was all black and it had, like crustacean like these, um, it had, but it was an avant-garde look that I shot on black. And so it was black hair, but it was shot on black. And the really, the cool thing, I'd spent so long on the lighting in my studio that I wanted to make sure that wherever I was shooting, you know, if it was, if it was black on black like this, you couldn't see any detail in it. So I had lights coming from the side, I had lights coming from above. And so I'd rim out the model to where you can see those light. You could, it actually made it look like the black hair was like light because it was lit around the rim. So it would stand off from the background. So. Got yeah, um, keep the questions coming guys. Um, what's a heat gun? A heat gun. Well, this is something that you can get at Home Depot. Um, just go into Home Depot and ask them what a heat gun is. They'll uh, direct you right to it. I actually bought mine on Amazon, but it's a heat gun that basically looks like a gun that people use to kind of sh shrink wrap packages as far as with the plastic. But you have this heat gun, it gets so, so hot that you could 
also do that as well on the heat gun. It comes with a glove. And so you could heat it up against your hand. Your glove would protect you. But I mean, I like the old school iron myself. It kind of feels like I'm, uh, but I really, really like this, like th this piece right here. You can see how this texture and you can see it up against my, my black here, you know, like that, like that one's a really, really cool piece. Really, really cool piece. So What are you looking for while burning the hair? When would you know it's done? When would you know it's too far? So what you, what you want to keep in mind is that you want it to have a hard crustacean to it. Like that is, you want it to be like, you know, like a hard crustacean. You really can't burn it too far because if you burn it too far and it discolors that specific hair color, like if it's white, of course, you're gonna burn it and it's gonna look yellow. It's gonna look really bad yellow. And that's why I went in with hair, um, I'm sorry, spray paint um, and I spray painted it white because the white is what's gonna keep the consistency of the white hair. If these were yellow, it would look totally off. It would not look good at all. And so if you're using yellow hair and you went to go burn it and it went kind of like to a mustard tone, I would take a yellow spray paint and spray it so it keeps the consistency all the way down. Does that make sense when I say that? So, cool. Where do you get your inspiration? My inspiration comes from a ton of, ton of different places, guys. It comes from nature is a really big inspiration to me. Um, and then technology, you know, because there is, there's a videographer that I want you guys to look up. Um, he is, his name is Gareth Pugh and Gareth Pugh, if you guys don't know who he is, he's a, he's a designer out of the UK. This guy does some of the coolest work. Well, number one, he, he, um, collaborates with a woman called Ruth Hogbin, Ruth Hogbin. They've done, they've done these video fashion shows. Just look them up. They'll, they're mind blowing. They're super, super cool. So I'm inspired by technology, which because they're using technology and fashion, nature's a big inspiration. And then just time alone to daydream. I don't think as um, artists, we spend enough time daydreaming or like when it comes down to um, just allowing ourselves to not be bothered so much by what's going on in our world because so much we get, we're just so from one thing to the next, from one thing to the next that you really want to make sure that you can kind of quiet your mind and just daydream. For example, this specific look right here. So I was taking, so I had all this different synthetic hair in here and I had this synthetic hair and it was on a table and it was all like out of its bag and I was looking at it like this direction, how you're looking at it right now. And if you can see, if you look at synthetic hair like this, it's really, really shiny, right? When it's bent like this, it's really shiny. It looks very synthetic. But I had all these bunches of hair and it was like, and I was just looking over at it. And I was, as I was staring at it, I was looking inside of the hair shape. Well, one of the things you want to keep in mind is that I was like, how sick, how cool would it be to create a hairstyle that I look inside of it? And so I see inside of the strands. And that's how I kind of came up with this specific kind of style. So daydreaming, number one, was has allowed me to, you know, just really kind of expand my repertoire right there. So cool. Could you say that uh, guy's name one more time? Oh, the videographer. Um, well, the fashion designer, his name is Gareth Pugh. And then the um, videographer that he works with, her name is Ruth Hogbin. So. And then we've got some people asking for your Insta name. So my Insta is Jake Thompson Hair. Um, go ahead and check that out, guys. You know, um, if you have any questions about other things, you know, ask there. I've also created a YouTube channel where I go in a lot more in depth from classic hairdressing to avant-garde hairdressing to, you know, makeovers and whatnot. So check that out. That's also under Jake Thompson hair on YouTube. So yeah, guys, I would, uh, let's, let's, let's get connected. You know, the cool thing about this hair industry guys is that, you know, we are all, we, we have 
so much in common. Number one, we're all hairdressers, which is badass, by the way. And then the other thing is that, you know, some of us are really creative. Some of us aren't as creative. Some of us want to be more creative. The cool thing about it is that there's an outlet like Hairbrain. Hairbrain is a cool outlet because these guys bring, you know, manufacturers, underground artists like myself, you know, commercial hairdressers. They bring us all together to just allow us to spread our wings. So again, thanks Hairbrain for bringing me on. I appreciate you guys. So, and again, let's just, uh, let's kind of do a, a back take and let's kind of look and see how this shape is looking and what's going on with this. I mean, I hope you guys like this. If you like it, start, uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a, give me a like for that. But, and if you do share it, you know? So, I mean, I think it's really looking pretty awesome myself, but again, like I'm kind of relying on your guys' eyes. So tell me, how are we doing here? So right now I'm just kind of, I'm kind of creating like some peak valleys, like right through that kind of top-ish area. So you can kind of see through a little bit in those areas. Kind of see a little bit of the black coming through, right through here at her hairline. And as you can see, it's like just so, this is like so fun to create, you know, I'll take a couple shots after this to post this, so you guys can see this, but thank you guys so much for tuning in and checking things out on a Monday, you know, Monday. So as I start to kind of look at that, I can start to kind of see that shape. You know, and again, this this is just, it's very, very fun. You know, I would encourage you guys, really just do, do what you can. Spread your wings, get creative. You know, if nobody even sees it, that's something, that's okay, all right? You know, I, I think that as, you, as we start to create art, one of the things is that it can be a very vulnerable thing. Too many people are, I mean, people can be ruthless, right? People can be super rude. You know, I've gotten to a point to where if you don't like it, it's okay. It's subjective. Art is super subjective, right? Avant-garde especially. Now, so any more questions, guys? You start teaching classes again in Salt Lake. Yes. Heck yeah, man. Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting time. We all know. I don't really need to talk about it right now. But yeah, I would very much love to get back into hands-on. I think that that's how people learn the most, especially hairdressers. They want to touch it. They want to feel it. They want to do it. And so, yes, whoever said that. Um, cool. Yes, sir. Is there a specific wig cap you like working with? Um, you know what? Wig caps, you know, you know what? The regular nylon. Um, wig caps, I think it's, is it nylon? Is that, is that what it is? It's like a pan, or what's that fabric? Is that nylon? Yeah. So um, just use a nylon one. They work perfectly fine. You can get it with Sally's, you know? So, all right guys, I'm gonna put this to the side here for just a minute, okay? And then let's talk a little bit about this specific one. So one of the questions was talking about how to flatten um, working with hair that's been like pressed or flattened. Well, first off, so this was kind of something that this is all real hair. This is not synthetic hair at all. And so to first keep in mind is that, you know, how did I create this texture? There's no hairspray used. There's no gel used. I would do the same thing, wig wrap them. And then as you can see, I've got T-pins in here holding this but I've got this shape to where it creates this really bizarre looking shape, right? Is this gonna be something you're gonna go to church with? No, probably not, right? But this is something that kind of keeps me more inspired because when I look at this, it looks like the hair is like blowing in the wind because it's like just like so crazy. So again, this was done with spray paint of course, I pre-prepped the hair, so I used a little mini crimper, and then, or I used a square crimper on this to create a look like this. 
Do you guys dig this? I mean, I think this is super, super fun. It's different. If I was going to photograph this, I would probably photograph it to where it was like if the camera was coming this direction. And so you're seeing a little bit of her face through here, and then you kind of see this hair kind of coming forward that direction. So, but yeah. So and you, as you can see, like some of these smaller sections right throughout the front that, you know, I've cut around this, the, the face and whatnot. So, and again, this is just to kind of show you guys, like get inspired, like do things that are completely out of the normal. That's the whole thing about hairdressing. And if you're going to do editorial looks, you're going to